Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Letterman Row. I am Austin Ward, joined by the big man over here, Reed Fragel, former Ohio State offensive lineman. And we're looking at this. I know that you love it. That big, nasty, physical running attack. Uh, these guys are fueling it. Justin Fields gets attention. J.K. Dobbins gets attention. Master T gets attention. Those big guys are opening up all the holes, though. Yeah, and, and you love to see it. I mean, to have every single guy in that offensive line playing at their best, it's it's a perfect example of, of what you want to see as an offensive line coach. Um, it, you get kind of nitpicky there as to where you can improve on. and <laughs> There's always something, but with these guys, it makes it a little bit harder. What's the key to that uh, mindset you need to be a good run blocker? I think just playing with some anger, some meanness. Um, you know, when that whistle blows, you got to snap into a different dude. Um, I think being able to do that, and these guys obviously show that they are they're doing that. Um, it's it's fun to watch, and uh, it's not something you see with every unit, every position across the board. You see this with this Ohio State rushing attack, one of the best in the country. It's because of those five guys, maybe six guys, when you throw in Josh Alby, mm -hmm. getting the job done. Reed's breaking all that success down right now on Buck IQ. Let's roll the tape. All right, Reed, if you're if you're trying to fuel a running game, sometimes it happens, uh, as you well know, with Braxton Miller from back <clears> in the day, where some of those rushing yards can come when it's actually a design pass. And so yeah, that's a, a tricky one sometimes for offensive linemen, but they do their job, and that winds up allowing him to still be alive here. Yeah, I think you get the rush up the field from the defensive ends and the um, interior guys. That kind of helps Justin Fields obviously see that and see that opening, give him some space to, to work his magic. But you see a great pass off here on the right side with Wyatt Davis and Josh Allaby. It's a good stunt on the defense. Josh Allaby sits on it, recognizes it comes off. Otherwise, most guys would give up a sack there. Alby's able to recover, get off in time, and pick up that stunt. Justin Fields does the rest of the work. Yeah, everything's completely accounted for. You got Munford wins a one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. matchup. Mm -hmm. These two guys on on the left and, and center, Jonah Jackson and, and Josh Myers, have really been playing well. Yeah. And I mean, you talked about this here. This is about as perfect as you can maybe do it, right? Oh yeah. I mean, Josh Myers sealing that off. You see, see ribs there. It's called sauce the ribs. I think I've referenced that before. <laughs> but um, as a, a duo there, kind of on one guy, that's what you love to see. And uh, they just tee off. And I mean, that's. You're just a field, you're licking your chops all day at that. And then uh, you got a lot of space, and then he can do the rest with that athleticism into the end zone. So this rushing attack sometimes is come, comes out of the passing game. Mm -hmm. Here's an example later on as we go that just old-fashioned get downhill, let Master Teague do some work. Yeah, I like Teague the way he runs just downhill. It's almost like a fullback would. Um, I know it's kind of a dying breed, but that's kind of how <laughs> I view Teague, I guess, with uh, <clears throat> Dobbins back there. But you see a great cutoff here by... Uh, Josh seals it off, hands it over to Jonah Jackson, climbs up the second level, They're able to seal that off. I don't know what the linebacker's doing sitting back there, but Josh <laughs> Myers is loving that. It's an easy seal off for him. Um, and then Teague obviously does the rest. You give him that much space right there, that arm tackle's not going to work. See ya. Now this was the game, too, where you have Josh Albia on the edge. He, yeah. Ohio State named him the offensive player of the game. Mm -hmm. They don't usually single guys out, but that's how impressive this, this real outing really was for him. Yeah, I think that's a, a statement on the coach's behalf that – you know, that was a huge point um, in the game to lose to lose the right tackle spot there mm -hmm. and have him come in with, you know, I mean, no real experience before last year, I guess, in the yep. big stage. Uh, but to come in and have, you know, 70 plays and I think three knockdowns, that's a huge testament there. And I think the coaches made a statement by giving him the, the offensive game ball there. All right. Now, running on Nebraska and, <clears throat> and running on Michigan State are, are different things. This is one more score uh, just for Ohio State there in the trenches for Teague. Yeah. Not a lot of work to do, but they Ohio State gets the job done up front. Uh, easy enough for Teague to finish that off. But we kept talking about Michigan State being the test. Mm -hmm. And that was a really good rush defense, and there were still a bunch of plays like this happening. Yeah, and this this you'll see. I mean, a bad tackle there at the end. But uh, <laughs> you'll see the safety, though, in the beginning here. He bites down and reads it wrong. I don't know what he was looking at, but he, he kind of just, do, just does enough to where uh, Dobbins can see a hole. O-line obviously does a phenomenal job getting the second level, sealing everything off. And there's usually one guy to beat, and that's the safety. But Dobbins obviously has a step on him because he's reading down this way for some reason. <laughs> and now he's trying to make a tackle from behind on Dobbins at full sprint. So that's where you see this play kind of develop. And then the rest is history with Dobbins. I mean, it's a foot race. That guy tries to strip the ball apparently at the end instead of tackling him. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's thinking. <laughs> didn't really work out. Yeah, it was a really bold choice. And, um, obviously, as an offensive lineman, you love to see that kind of develop off of a perfectly blocked play. Yeah, when you And you say they're perfectly blocked. You know, yep. Take me through it. Each guy seems <clears> to get <throat> something done here, and we don't have to go through all five of them, but what, what most impresses you about the cohesion here and the way that this is blocked up front? Well, just the sound footwork. I mean, Josh Myers up here, he's, he's, 
he's, he knows that he's probably going to be solo up to that Mike Backer, most likely. He's still looking off that three tech just in case he does stun inside, but he's, he's quiet with his footwork. He's climbing up. He's getting right underneath his helmet, takes away the vision of the linebacker, which is just enough space for, for Dobbins to recognize that he cuts right off of that. Backside block is just enough. I mean, maybe just a little bit more sound there. Guy gets an arm out, but uh, that's a tough block there as a backside guard. Backside tackle obviously cuts him off well enough. That's kind of a out of the play block. Mm -hmm. But the front side push, I mean, this is this is what you're looking for is these guys to push them out of the play. I think it's an outside zone play. He cuts it up inside. Safety rolls over the top. It's game over. And, you know, since you're in here, we can always include the tight ends. You got Jake yeah, Houseman actually throw, throwing some blocks there. Like he, He's actually been helping out a lot more uh, with that run blocking than maybe I anticipated this year, and that's a key part of that unit. Yeah, and I think – Back, thinking back to our tight end room when I was there, we had guys that were good at you know certain roles, and uh, whether it be more of the run blocking tight ends like Jake here, um, everybody has a role in an offense, and um, that's great to see that kind of continue that trend continue within the tight end room. Ohio State's got it rolling with <clears throat> those guys up front. That's been one of the stories of the first half of the season. Great to have Reed Fragle breaking down the Ohio State offensive line and some of that slobbish play that's coming back <laughs> for the Buckeyes as they roll in here the second half and play Northwestern on Friday night. Thanks to Reed for hanging out with us at Letterman Row on Buck IQ. I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live. We've got the practice report. we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. we got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. we got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.